From CEO to social media and marketing guru, Sharon Williams is the founder of renowned agency Taurus Marketing. She's regularly called upon for her expert opinion on TV, is a member of numerous boards and is an accomplished keynote speaker. So is she a game changer? Let's find out. I'm Sarah Harris. Welcome to the Carousel's Game Changers. Sharon, welcome to Game Changers. Now, your Twitter bio reads, uh, CEO and founder of Taurus Marketing, 9MSN blogger, international speaker, PR marketer, uh, PR and marketer, branding expert, former chair of CEO Institute, mother of three, and surf lifesaver. I'm exhausted just reading that. <laughs> How do you keep all these balls in the air? Oh, I think it's about having fun and um, earning a good living and doing each of those roles as well as you can. I think we have a very short time here, so we've got to make the most of it. I like that you've always followed your own path. And unlike some other business entrepreneurs, you didn't go to university. You decided to dive straight into work. Why was that important to you? It was important at the time, even though I got into university, um, I always always wanted to be an officer in the, in the Navy. Wow. I got into that too. and But I also got into Marks and Spencer's retail management training, which was... Uh, very sought after, and I'd been brought up in a divorced family, my mother, which was very rare then, um, and mum was on her own and I wanted to contribute and I felt I wanted to get out of the workforce and earn a living and forge a, forge a career. It's interesting, single mothers seem to produce really strong daughters, don't they? Yes, I think so. I think seeing mum go through what she went through and I had a younger sister um, really made me feel like I was responsible for my own future. I didn't finish university either. I wanted to get out as soon as possible and get uh, work experience and life experience. Is that something that you recommend to other young entrepreneurs? I think if an entrepreneur has got an idea, then they should get on and do it. And they don't need to go to university to have that. I think if you want to be a lawyer or you want to have um, a certain course in medicine, then university is a must-have. Kind of have to do it for brain you do, surgery. But if you've got a good idea, then then why wait? Go for it. By the time you go for it, the idea will be, be out of date. You obviously have this incredible fire in your belly that's been around since you were a little girl. Um, do you think that young people today, that they have that same work ethic? Oh, I think I've, I, I employ a lot of young people and I think that, and I have teenage daughters and daughter, daughters in their 20s and a teenage son, I think that life for a lot of them is much easier than it was for us then, although not for all. So yes, I'd say, I'd say hard work is usually the cause of success. Hard work and, and resilience. And res sticking to something, yeah, tenacity. Resilience is something that you know a lot about. You are in a, a pretty tough fight for your life at the moment. Can you tell us about that? Uh, that's two years ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, early stage breast cancer and we treated that and it went to sleep and it raised its head again in May of this year um, and I've just been through some operations and radiotherapy and I went in last Monday to hopefully get the all clear and I've been I'm back on the the agenda again it's now I've got to go through another possible diagnosis so um, cancer is a surprise I think it's a shock and uh, I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to define cancer and not let it define me. It's interesting to hear the way you're speaking about it. It's almost like a, a business problem that can be overcome. Do you have to be in that kind of that mindset to, 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 to battle it? Do you have to kind of approach it at, like business? I think being a parent and being a business owner, you deal with problems all day. So cancer is just another one to deal with and it's a real intrusion in my day and it's a real intrusion on my body um, and one in eight women are diagnosed with breast cancer so I'm not gonna I'm not going to hide under a, a rock and, and and go woe is me let's just carry on and beat it I'm well educated the medical profession is extraordinary let's just get on and deal with it the best way we can and may I say deal with it my way do you have dark moments where you let yourself think about what if or do you stay in the positive and keep looking forward? Uh, I probably had two screams in the hallway where I've fallen to my knees and gone, this is really rotten, but no, then pick myself up. I swim in the mornings of my stays at the beach. I try before I go to work and I reckon if you've been down to the beach and looked at the ocean, had a good swim, 
got all the irons of nature in you before you go off to a corporate day. I don't think much can go wrong. And um, no, I'll, I'll get by this and I'll get through it. And I think it's, it's great to put my, my label on it and not let it start putting me into somewhere that, that I don't need to be. Now let's talk about your company, Taurus. It prides itself on having a straight talking, no bull approach. I like that. What do you mean by it? Yeah, I think that's about not wasting time. Um, I lost my sister when she was 30. I lost my brother when he was 16, um, both to cancer, but different types of cancer to the one that I've been diagnosed with. And they taught me, and I think my nan and my great aunt taught me, who founded a school that I went to, um, that, that life is short and you've got to get on. And so... I don't want to waste a moment and Taurus is about that integrity and tenacity and excellence and that no bull. And it's funny, Taurus, no bull, load of bull. Uh, I thought it was a, a chance to laugh at oneself, but also just straight talk and get the work done. And I love that it was started in your lounge room the day your daughter was born. Yeah, that's the date I registered the, the company name. So they both share the same birthday. Wow. <laughs> 21. They're both 21. So, so, so talk to me. How, how, how do you make that happen? How do you work from your lounge room with a, a brand new screaming child and, um, and, and, and start a business? Yeah, I think lots of women are doing it now and it, it's getting um, more common. But in those days, my husband was traveling a lot and I don't know how I did it now when I look back because I had another baby soon after that and then, and then um, Ollie came along, so I had three. Um, but I think you just, and I had no family here, so I think you just get organised and get on with it. I mean, I'm living in Australia. We're the most extraordinary country ever. And um, I think that if you've got opportunities, you need to take them and, and deal with it and make it happen. There were a lot of working through the nights. <laughs> Not much sleep. <laughs> Not much sleep in those early years. <laughs> now, work-life balance is something I suppose we all strive for, but do you think such a thing actually exists? Yes, I do. And I think life is about choices. And I think when you hear people moan, you what's my favourite saying? You're CEO of your own existence. So we've got to take responsibility for ourselves. We've got to take responsibility for our health, for our relationships, for our our staff, our well-being, our play, and therefore work-life balance. Although it's a struggle because we're, we're usually undisciplined, the human race tends to, to be easily distracted. If you can be disciplined and make it and program it into your day, you can have work-life balance. And I'm really passionate about that with my team. What does work-life balance then look like for you on a practical level? How, how, how do you... How, how do you ensure that you have work-life balance? So as much as I can, I'll go to the beach in the morning. It doesn't always work out. A client might need me. Um, I might need to have an early morning appointment, but I'll try and go to the beach in the morning. Um, I try and make sure that my team are all getting that time as well. So yeah, I, I guess not much at weekends, resting at weekends, working hard through the week. If you have your own business, you're 20 fold by seven anyway, um, but trying to get to the beach each day if I can is a great, great work-life thing for me. And taking holidays. Yes, because a lot of people like to save them up mm. so they can take a big holiday. But do you think it's important to have regular breaks? Mini break breaks are really good. They just recharge you. Mm. So if you can try and go even a night away or, or a couple of days break or a long weekend is really great. We get so many long weekends in this country. Um, but if we, if we can, have a long weekend. And then, and then, of course, you have your family breaks, which for most people are put around school holidays, of course, if they've got school-aged children. You have to do a lot of socialising in your game as well. How do you manage that? I think that's great. Yeah, you like it? <laughs> yes, I do. Because <laughs> it's all about personal relationships. It is, and that's why I'm in business, because the people I work with and the people I work for are are just wonderful, they're extraordinary. Someone said to me the other day, what would you do if you won you know, millions and millions and you didn't, have, you didn't have to work or you didn't want to? I said, no, I'd go to work. I love my clients, I love my team, and uh, they inspire me every day. They're, they're wonderful, so yeah. Some of the world's greatest entrepreneurs are fitness fanatics in their private lives. So for example, uh, Janine Alice from Boost Juice, she is a dedicated yogi. You are a surf lifesaver. Uh, you run as well? I run on the beach and I swim. I'm a swimmer. Wow. How important do you think is a good well-being to the success of your business? Everything. Mm. So uh, if, if obviously when you've got an infrastructure in place, the business can operate without you. But if you want to 
continue to drive your goals, then you've got to maintain your health. And when I was working through the night in the early days with three children, my mother said to me, um, if you go down, there's no one to look after these children. You've got to keep yourself well. And women aren't good at that. So a good lesson is to take care of number one before, and then everybody else is fine. Because people tend to wear it as a bit of a badge of honour, being frazzled and stressed and a workaholic. But uh, do you think that's a bit counterproductive? I don't think it's clever. Why, why would you want to be a martyr? And, uh, and no, I don't think it's clever. And I always love the airlines. You know, when the oxygen comes down, they say, put the mask on first before you, before you help anybody else. Um, tough one for women who have always been taught to look after everybody else. Um, and I still think we should look after people. I think that's one of the gifts of being a female, but you, want, you do have to look after yourself too. You are so beautifully put together. I'm looking at your perfect hair and your makeup now. Um, you are, of course, an expert as well on personal branding. Um, you believe it's important to have children as young as eight start crafting their personal brand. What do you mean by that? Um, Sarah, I think it's more about children being conscious of their personal brand. So I don't, I don't believe in, in, in uh, dressing children and pageanting children and all that sort of personal branding as young as eight. But what's happening is, is children are going online oh. very young. Mm. And uh, when I was young, we had paper resumes. Now we have digital resumes. And children are going to have digital resumes and they're online um, presence is going to define them for all time. So I would like parents and individuals to be conscious of what is put on online about them. Facebook is like a tattoo and to be very conscious of their personal brand. I also think that unfortunately or fortunately people make a decision when you, they meet you in the first 30 seconds, um, backed up by one minute, two minute, five minute intervals. And so that's important in business. If you're going to make an impression and you want people to part with money to become customers or you want people to assess you for a career move, then I think being careful about your personal brand is important. And do you think that will really affect... Do you think perhaps a silly post on Facebook or maybe a, a photo of a drunken night out could affect future employment options? It absolutely does. Wow. And it also has legal, legal consequences. And you've obviously instilled this in your kids as well? I have, yes. What have they said? They, they know. know. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do that when you're a parent, though? How do you warn kids that, as you say, Facebook is a tattoo? Make, make it fun. Make it funny. Um, let them know that when they meet the, the boy of, or girl of their dreams and they're meeting the mother-in-law for the first time, <laughs> would they like their mother-in-law to, to be able to read what they posted? And they suddenly go, oh. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> or the career of your, dream, your dreams, whatever it is that you paint pictures for them and say, now, now what would your headmaster think? Or what would Nana think? Or what would your future boyfriend think? Oh, what would Nana think? <laughs> That's cold, isn't it? <laughs> um, you and your company, Taurus, have been recognised with a number of personal and professional awards. How important are these accolades to you? And, it, and does it define success for you? I think success is defined by many different things, not just awards. Awards are usually wonderful because it's your peer group, your industry that is awarding you. So becoming a fellow of the PRAA was a highlight for me. Um, my seeing my team win professional awards is great for them. And um, it also is like a tick on the, on the standard and the excellence of the work you're doing, which of course is really rewarding. They say that success is a pretty lousy teacher and most great entrepreneurs have had had some epic failures along the way. Um, have you had any big setbacks and how have you overcome them? If you're in business, there's setbacks all the time and um, what you've got to be good at is getting through those and over those. And yeah, plenty of times where I, 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 I don't think I've ever thought of giving up or I've never thought of it was all too big. But certainly I've sat down and thought I need to think things through and maybe, m maybe take a few hours out to, to think it through and come up with a solution. The other thing is, is surround yourself with great people who can help you. Do you think people realise what it actually takes to be successful? The hours that you have to put in, the fact that it can be sometimes really, really lonely, the sacrifices that you need to make? 
No, I meet lots of entrepreneurs who come to my business to help to launch and, and not many of them have, have got the, uh, not all of them have got all the ducks in a row to be successful, which is why it's great fun to help them. Taurus has been running for 21 years. Uh, what is the secret to remaining relevant in business when the world of technology is changing so rapidly? I think that that's been um, a great achievement to be in the business that I'm in for so long and maintain success. Um, and it's been very exciting to see te technology change. And that will continue. So what one has to do is adapt with the times and also go back to core basics of what you're actually trying to achieve in the end and then utilising technology to get there. So don't be afraid of technology. No, Stay love it. it. Embrace it. <laughs> final piece of advice for anyone who's sitting there listening to you thinking, I want to be just like her. Oh gosh, be just like me. Well, go out and have fun, live a good life. Integrity, tenacity, excellence. I think they're the things to pursue. Sharon, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure, Sarah. Thank you.